What's up, War Report family? We are back with another great edition of Facts or Naw, the weekly rapid fire question and answers coming at y'all. Fellas, y'all ready to do this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's get it kicked off like this. Facts or Naw, the starting QB at the beginning of the season will still be our starting QB to start SEC play in October. Fellas, what do we think? I'm going to say... Facts. I think whoever gets the job will know that somebody behind them wants that job and is ready to take it at a moment's notice. Well, regardless of what's been said about Bo to this point, I still think that having somebody behind him is probably the best thing that this staff could have done for him. So whether it's him or Finley, who's already been through some of those QB battles, I don't think whoever wins the job out of the gate is going to want to give it to the person behind them. So I'm saying facts. Whoever has it to start keeps it going into SEC play. I'm going to go facts here just simply because the grind of our schedule will actually begin in October. And if you're already shaky by then, chances are you probably shouldn't have been named the starter going into the season anyway. Uh, I like whoever they name to actually have a good footing, even if it results in a loss on the road against Penn State, at least have a strong enough showing to where the coaching staff still feels confident in their ability to actually go out and win games or at least do what the coaching staff is requiring them to do. So I'm going to go facts here. I think that, that Q, the QB starter will still be the guy going into October, and hopefully they can take on a brutal October schedule. So I'm going facts. Well, I'm going to go for the clean sweep here and also say facts as well, but with a caveat. I think that the Penn State game will serve to either affirm or expose whoever we have at quarterback, but I don't think it's going to be enough for them to make the change going into LSU. I think we'll actually see a change after that game or at halftime of that game if it is not going well when you couple that with what will happen in the Penn State game. But for now, I'm going to go facts. Whoever starts in September will start in October when we play LSU. They may not, they may not just finish in October. All right, fellas, facts or not, Brian Harson will produce at least one number one overall NFL draft pick during his time at all. As much as I'd like to say facts, <laughs> I'm going to go nah on this one. This is a tall task, I think, for, for him. I wouldn't li like to just see him start producing first round draft picks, to be honest. So number one overall draft pick. Yeah, it would be nice. Who was our, our, our last number one overall? Cam Newton. He did okay in the league. I don't know if I see that sort of talent coming through Auburn again here in the next few years. So as much as I'd like to see it, I'm going to have to go gnaw on this one. Maybe plenty of first round draft picks, but number one overall, roll of the dice. I'm going to go gnaw here. Uh, even though Harson has been praised for his ability to actually scout and identify talent. In fact, there was an article that came out just recently around the NFL draft where he was in after some kids on the recruiting trail who actually ended up being first round draft picks in this past draft. So I think that this coaching staff has an ability to identify talent, particularly at the quarterback position and get those guys developed to where they can actually be potential first round draft picks. Uh, we definitely see it could be a possibility we'll do that on the defensive side of the ball. That remains to be seen with the stability of our coaching staff. We're not all that confident that Mason or Easton will be here after two years. So it'll just be interesting to see how these guys develop. I think it's a bit premature to say that we'll have a number one pick overall in the NFL draft, but I'm looking forward to seeing us having first round draft picks. So it's a not here. I'm going to say nah, but not quite for the same reasons. I think number one overall draft pick comes down to QB, vast majority of the time, a can't-miss offensive line prospect, and a can't-miss defensive line prospect. Running backs have been our best position for Auburn for a while now, and honestly, you're not going to get a number one overall running back. It's just not that day and age in the NFL anymore. QB, we hope we can make some strides, but... It's been shaky, and even if Harson gets the guys he wants, it may not be the best, most talented guy. It might be the guy that just fits the system. So I think because of what we recruit well, what we have traditionally put into the NFL, those positions just aren't what's going to be at a premium going into the NFL. So I'm going to say no. All right, guys. Facts or no, Auburn will have zero 
disciplinary dismissals in 2021. What you got? I'm going to go now on this one. Listen, fellas, football is a game, but Brian Harson is not here to play games. So I fully expect there to be some disciplinary dismissals in his tenure at Auburn, just based on how we see. We saw some guys run for the hills just at the work they were facing in this new system. So work hard work has been a theme of this offseason. He's going to carry that theme into the season. Guys are going to have to get on board or find another ship to sail on in 2021. So I'm going on this one. Yeah, as much as I, I hate to say it, I do think I see some disciplinary issues popping up with, with what are ultimately college kids who are going to do stupid things from time to time. And Harson is definitely not going to handle it, you know, with kid gloves. So not nah, on this one. I'm going to say facts. Listen, Harson has laid down the law as much as you can up to this point in his coaching tenure at Auburn. I don't know what kid would come in here and want to test him when he's already gotten rid of three and four star guys out of the gate. Nobody is safe here. Everybody knows they're going to be held accountable. And I think that goes a long way towards letting everybody know not to tread lightly when it comes to what the coaches are asking them to do on or off the field. So I'm going to say facts. We keep it clean 2021. I'm going to go nah on here. Uh, I think Brian Harson is still installing, instilling his culture at Auburn. And he's yet to go through a football season in the fall. And as we get through fall camp and as we get through the season, guys are really going to start seeing where they fall and fit on the team. And with that, their focus may rise or it may decrease and they become less distracted because I'm not the guy anyway. A guy's got a lot to prove right now trying to get in where they're fit in and win their positions. You can see a lot of distractions coming up in the in when football season when kids return to campus and the, the campus is as lively as it is. With that comes opportunities to get in trouble. And I think Brian Harson may actually have to kick a kid off the team. It may not be public. It may not be a big deal, but you may see him dismiss a guy or two. So I'm going not nah here. All right. You guys know what time it is. Fan question of the week. This week's fan question comes from our guy, Corey Weber. That's CWeb underscore 44. And he asks, facts or not, nah, the 2021 men's basketball team will win at least 13 conference games this upcoming season. Fellas, what do we think? Facts. Bruce is the man. We got the guys. We got the talent. We got the coach, thankfully, because a lot of people don't have the coach. I'm going to buy whatever Bruce is selling and whatever Corey's asking. He could have said 18 conference games. I would have bought it. So, yes, facts. <laughs> I'm going to go facts here as well. I think that Auburn is in a situation where hopefully – Auburn isn't dealing with guys uh, not being eligible like last year, injuries like last year. Uh, this is a team that could have been rolling last year and actually made a good run, but guys not being able to play together, get in the rhythm, that, that stunted their growth and hurt their chances at, at the postseason. I'm being optimistic that that's not the case this year, that all the guys that, that Pearl and this staff has done a great job of recruiting will be eligible. They'll be playing together. They'll get chemistry together and they can be in a position to make a great run. I think they'll be able to get 13 conference wins. So I'm going facts here. Yeah, this is not hard for me. I'm definitely going facts on this one. This might be Bruce Pearl's most talented team, even more talented than the Final Four team that we had a few years ago. Uh, with the guy that he got coming in from North Carolina and some of the other kids that he's bringing in as freshmen, I really believe that he's going to pull it together this year. The point guard position is going to look strong. They're going to be uh, have a lot of experience all over the court, and we've got probably what is the top five of coaches in college basketball on the sideline for us. So I'm going facts on this one. I think this is the year that Auburn basketball returns to basketball prominence under Bruce Pearl because development and strength and getting your weight up are themes of the Bruce Pearl tenure, baby. Let's go. All right, fellas. Well, that is another great edition of Facts and Naw. Listen, we want to hear from you. So please tweet at us at The War Report on Twitter and get your fan question in so we can use that next time. Other than that, you know where to find us. We are at The War Report on Twitter and Instagram, TW Report on TikTok. 
Gentlemen, we're signing off. And as always, War Eagle. War Eagle.